Luke had spent a year in pre-production on that thing with illustrators and had a Bible of illustrations that were the, you know, the look of the film. And then Dan Vale, the production designer, his job was to sort of articulate that Bible in the, in the full-size sets, and my job was to articulate it in, into the visual effects. And, um, and we both worked really well together. And he wanted to do the miniatures in England, and I said, no, that's not going to work. We're going to do the miniatures at Digital Domain. And, and he just said, okay, and that was that, you know. And there are other shows with other signature shots, as I called them. But I just, you know, would try to do that on, on a number of the shows that we did. On Fifth Element, I had this treasure trove of illustrations. And, and uh, so we, you know, went for that over and over again. Uh, one of the key ones being the Thai ship scene, uh, those big red buildings. And we shot in London for about six months. But uh, when I got back, you know, the model work was well underway already because we wanted to start shooting the model work when I got back. And so some of the stuff just wasn't quite right. And I remember begging for Ron to uh, take off his art director cap and put his model painter cap back on one more time for me and paint that uh, Mondeshawan no. ship no, and sa didn't. save the Mondeshawan ship, basically. You know? <laughs> we called it the Big Potato. Came out with this rough slug and, and did a fiberglass shell out of that. Then... Um, that shell became a, uh, started just sculpting that, building up on top of that, coming up with the little arms uh, that planted on. There's a lot of plant on at that point. The fiber optics, we did a, God, the light, I think we had like 1,400, 1,500 fiber optic points uh, in the whole thing, and uh, with the illuminators inside, trying not to catch on fire. They wanted really bright lights to be able to shine down these four little uh, um, pods that were on the side. So those had to be housed in aluminum in a way that wouldn't melt things. There's a lot of, you know, fire prevention going on. Uh, <clears throat> the, uh, the fiber optics, we were putting those in. And uh, there's a funny story with that with Mark Stetson, because, you know, Mark worked on uh, the first Star Trek movie with V'ger. And they had a big disaster happen with, uh, they were putting fiber optics into V'ger on, on the weekend and uh, using super glue to glue them on. And they came back at the end of the, at the next Monday, and all the fibers had come off and were down on the ground. And what had happened was they were using super glue in the kicker, and it was crazing and, and breaking the fiber optic. It would just break off and fall. And uh, so uh, anyway, Mark comes walking through one day, and we're super gluing fiber optics in the Mondeshawan ship. And, he's, and he tells us this story. And as long as the fiber was dangling out and you glued it here, then you come back and you snip it once it's all dried. And that was the key, is to, to let a lot of it hang out, glue it, then snip it. And uh, so anyway, he had a little bet going with me that I won, that it would, uh, it would be okay the next when we came back Monday. <laughs> and it was. Mark uh, hired me as, uh, 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 at first to do some astronomical artwork, but it kind of grew into a visual effects art director job at Digital Domain, and where we both stayed for a few movies. And I eventually uh, ended up managing the art department there for about a year. Worked on, I think, Fifth Element, Supernova. Uh, it might have been the Red Planet. How quickly they passed from your mind. And then, uh, and that was obviously when I moved into digital work. But for Fifth Element, we still built models. And uh, they had a model shop there. That sort of was, you know, the end of my working on miniature models. And mind you, I did a little bit of model making, but I was primarily a painter. I built a bunch of, uh, a lot of uh, secondary cars. There was an ambulance, and I had worked on uh, the cop cars, and I worked on the train, the vertical train. I, I did all the building work and the tracks and, and parts of the train for the verti when you first see the vertical train. And uh, a lot of buildings, too many buildings. Clark was on it. Clark was actually in charge of the city, if I'm not mistaken. Clark in the city. <laughs> you know? But uh, that, was a, that was a fun set. I mean, it was supposed to look like it was just like thousands of feet down or whatever, you know. So basically we had a set of buildings from Baby's Day Out, Hudsucker, The Shadow, and I couldn't get any of those for Fifth Element because Godzilla was in town and gobbling everything up, and they wanted them. So we ended up building a whole new set of miniatures for Fifth Element and then renting them to Godzilla too because they were still going by the time we were done. So 
what we did get was a chance to build buildings purpose built to the shots, you know, so that was good. At, at first, everybody was, because it was, it was Mobius, you know, everybody knew it was Mobius. And uh, I, I was never that big of a comic book fan because I didn't, I didn't really have access to a lot of comic books when I was younger. When the designs first came in for, for Fifth Element, everybody was just like, this is some crazy looking stuff, you know, this is, I want to build a cool looking spaceship, you know. Well, it, it ended up, I guess time has, has shown that, that those Mobius designs are really, you know, very impressive, you know. And it kind of grew on you. There was a lot of kids that came in during that time period. I mean, Starship Troopers, Fifth Element, Titanic. It was a really big, hot time uh, for the industry. It was almost like the death, the final death throes of the industry. And uh, a lot of kids joined the union because they figured, well, if I join the union, that'll get me more work. Most of those kids never worked another job. You know, they worked on Fifth Element, that was it, you know. Because there was there was no more work for them. Because it it, it it wasn't about the union. It was about networking. It's about your contacts. You know, if you had the contacts, you you could keep working and working and working. You know, we with Fifth Element. You know, we built the middle in, in real scale, the middle 300 feet of a building. But there was still building below, and there was building above, and that was all being done, added digitally. And it was done beautifully. It looked beautiful. It, it it all fit together. You cannot see the seam of. Uh, of where the where it begins and ends and the, and the background you know we built down the street only so far and then you know beyond that was all digital the sky was digital working with mark stetson was a lot of fun you know he he really embraced the evolution the evolutionary process that we had to go through to, to develop for instance in the miniature lighting you know well the concept is that there's these cars flying at all these different levels they have to have some sort of uh, traffic control so how would you have traffic control for flying cars? Well, uh, you would have more than just three lights then. You'd have to have like left, right, forward, up, and down maybe. So we came up with this idea of using uh, not only the stoplights, but on the level that the stoplights are at, there'd be a, a red and a green light. Well, there's a little half round thing that out one side shine, shone red and the other side is shown green. And we could flip it around one way or the other. And we just drill a little hole through the building, punch a light through, and put this cap over it. Because you never knew where the camera was going to be until the last minute. They'd have to line up the shot, look at the digital previs, look at what they're doing, look at the building, see what looks pretty. Then they've decided where the shot will be. Now we've got to put in lights along that row real fast. And there was a crew of, I don't know, eight or ten of us that would then uh, just scramble and start drilling holes, putting these lights in, and putting the caps on, and uh, getting to the right level. So it's just, it was fun to get to get creative with that kind of level of it, you know, to, to start to invent the future a little bit, you know. So uh, a lot of times they say, here's a picture, build it. And other times they say, figure this out for us, you know. And so it's fun to figure things out. It was, it was a great film uh, to start on as a visual effects supervisor. Luke obviously had a very strong vision for it, and he could never articulate for me, because I don't think he really knew yet whether it was going to be a kid's fantasy or a comedy. And so until it became a comedy, I had no idea how the film was going to work. And then once it was a comedy, it all made perfect sense. You know, it was just so much fun.